Okay, we'll be finding the domain for this rational function. And of course, we have to talk about what does the word domain mean. This means we are going to find the set of all the possible x values that we can plug in into the function right here, right? And as we can see, when we have a rational function, we have to make sure that the denominator cannot be zero. And this is how we are going to set up the restriction. The top is innocent, the bottom is dangerous. We have to make sure that the denominator cannot end up to be zero, okay? And whenever we are doing domains, I would like to just write down the words, make sure, because this will help you to remember. We are trying to make sure that, we are trying to set the restriction that, in this case here, the denominator cannot be zero. So let me write down the denominator, 8x squared minus 18. We don't want this to be zero. And now we can just solve for the x values that it cannot be, okay? Here we have x to the second power. So to solve this, we have to factor things out. We see that we have an 8 here, and this is 18. First of all, we can factor out a 2, right? This has x squared, but this has no x, so the 2 is the most that we can do. And then you see that the leftovers is going to be, originally we have the 8, but then we factor the other 2, so we have a 4 left. And then the x squared is still the same right here, because we didn't factor any x. And this was a minus 18 earlier, but now it will be minus 9. 18 divided by 2, 9. Minus stays, okay? So this is the first part. And then, this right here, it's a difference of two squares. We have to look at this as something squared minus something squared. How can we end up with a 4 right here? Well, inside, we must have a 2. 2 to the second power gives us a 4, right? And then we also need to have this x. And then for the 9, we need to have the 3. So this is what we have to look at. Once again, we have to look at this as 2x. In this little parentheses, squared. And we are going to factor this out, and the two, this 2 stays all the way in the front. And this is going to give us 2x minus 3, so I'll put that down. And then the other factor is the plus version, so 2x plus 3. And this is not equal to 0. At the end, technically we have 1, 2, 3, 3 factors, but then for the first one, it doesn't have an x. It doesn't matter, we don't have to work out this 2 at all. 2 is of course not equal to 0, right? Only pay attention to the factors that has the x, which is this one and that one. So for this one, I'm going to put down, we need to make sure 2x minus 3 is not equal to 0. And then we also have to work this out, 2x plus 3 is not equal to 0. Right here, do the usual business, we add 3 on both sides, cancel, cancel, and then 2x is not equal to positive 3, so that we end up with, you know, after we divide both sides by 2, x cannot be 3 over 2. On the other hand, we subtract 3 on both sides so that they cancel, and then we see the 2x cannot be negative 3. And similar to that, we divide both sides by 2. And right here we are saying x cannot be negative 3 over 2. This 2, all the way in the front, doesn't matter. In fact, we can divide both sides by 2, so we can get rid of that. Only pay attention to the factors that they have the x in there. And this is pretty much the main ingredient, and at the end, this is how we like to write down the answer. So I'll put it down here for you guys. For the domain, keep in mind, it is a set, right? So I'll write it down in the set builder notation. The set of all the x values such that, well, right here, we are giving the condition, and this is meant to be the right brace like that much prettier right here. In here is the time that we are going to write down the conditions. x cannot be positive 3 over 2. And the other, direct, the, the other condition is x cannot be negative 3 over 2. Okay, cannot be. Anything else besides these two numbers are okay. So we are setting the restrictions for this function. And this right here is it.